everybody, uh, my name is Matt Abbott from the Nimson Thugs record label. Welcome to this week's Insta session. Um, I've been running these sessions since the start of May uh, just to give people that uh, fix, that live poetry fix um, and also to help me sort of retain uh, a shred of sanity as well. I've really, really enjoyed it. Um, I love the fact that I'm able to invite poets from all over the UK uh, to perform these really, really relaxed, laid back sessions and a couple of people have told me that they really, really enjoy watching it as well. So it's a great deal all around. Um, so tonight, I am very, very excited about the fact that we've got um, Josh Idahan, uh, Joshua Idahan joining us. Uh, Joshua is a highly renowned poet and also a musician. Um, he formed the legendary poetry magazine Po Jazzy. He's a facilitator. He's performed alongside the likes of Linton Kwesi Johnson. He also performs in a couple of bands, um, Benin City and Calabashed and he is appearing on the forthcoming Tung Fu album and also appeared on the brand new Souls album uh, by my best, best mate David Gledil. So, I am going to see if I can get Josh in. Being a bit of a Philistine northerner, but it usually works. Here we go. Hey, How are you doing? Hey. How are you doing, mate? You all right? Hi. Huh? You see me all right. Is this your first is this your first Insta Live? Is this your first yeah. one? No, no, no. I've done it before. I've done it before. But um this is the first one with you. And I think no, this is wait, hang on. No, this is the second one I've done. Also, I'm doing it from Stockholm. International. Really? Stockholm? International. International. Wow. International. Dun, 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 dun. International. International. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I'm buzzing about that. My first international. Well, look, I really appreciate you giving up your time, considering you're in Stockholm. That's great. Um, are you hey. over there for work? Or? Uh, no, I live here now. Oh wow. Yes. Oh, cool. Yes, yes. I, 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 I took the racist's advice and I left. <laughs> <laughs> I see. <laughs> and what's it like? Uh... What? Look, man, like, I don't blame you for leaving, to be fair. Like, it's not a great country to be right now, regardless, is it? But uh, what's well, it like you know, in Stockholm? Are you stepping in? Um, it's, it's weird. It's like, I keep telling people it's like the city in the, red, in the short story Red Harvest because, you know, COVID is kind of special in that it happens everywhere. And that's just the nature of it. It's going on everywhere. But people here are just pretending like it doesn't happen. Like, it hasn't hit here. And... Obviously, they have a lot of natural defenses. There's uh, less people, 10 million people in the whole of Sweden. And, you know, in London alone, there's 7 million. So that just gives you an idea of scope. And then a lot of the cases have happened in, like, uh, like a lot of clusters in, like, for example, densely populated areas, like where the immigrants are and where old, uh, old people. So they said, like, there's been a whole scandal about it kind of spreading around old people's homes here in Sweden. And, of course, compared to other Swedish uh, other Scandinavian countries or the Nordic countries like, for example, Finland is like 300 and Denmark is like uh, 500 and then Sweden is like 5,000. So as far as they're concerned, we're like, you know, Stockholm is like, so Sweden is like the England of the Nordic countries <laughs> in right. a way. Yeah, yeah. But no, I mean, honestly, here it's kind of like, it's in a way, it's, it's very similar to England, except they have more space and the government is competent. Right. Yeah. 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 And like, I can only I, imagine what that is. I tried so hard to. I'm trying to learn um, Swedish, but it's really difficult because everybody here is bilingual. It's like, right. Yeah, you're living in a country where everyone is pretty much better prepared than you. So even when I kind of like, <laughs> I'm, I'm like, you know, uh, going yaga and man or you know humadu, and then you're like, yes, we're fine. How are you? And you're like, oh, <laughs> guys. Please come on, I get it. You're better, but yeah, it's 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 I, fine. It's fine so I, far. I guess they appreciate you making an effort, though. Like it sort of reminds me of Berlin. You speak in German, they reply in English. But I suppose it is better to at least at least you know you trying. Like, yeah, no, they, they, I'm sure they appreciate well and good. But you know, <laughs> when you're trying to buy stuff at the local co-op, I think they just want you to move on. <laughs> you know, say, yeah. thank you very much. Yeah, great. You've learned a couple of Swedish words. <laughs> great. <laughs> cash or credit card but yeah it's um 
It's good. It's like walking around is just the, the, the vistas are fantastic. The the water here is good, <laughs> and the people here so far they've been fine. I mean, every every part of Europe has its own kind of weirdness and its own particular take on racism. Like they have they have an ice cream here called Nugga. <laughs> I know, right. and it's wow. chocolate. Yeah, and the worst thing is like this is how mad it is, right? I went into a store. And they had a sale on like these kind of bites. And on one corner, it was Nugga. Another corner, it was 88. Like they got chocolate called 88. So I'm looking at it like, 88. <laughs> Nugga, like, what are you trying to tell me? Right? And I'm sure everybody would be like, oh, what's the problem? It's just, you know, it's, nobody expected it. But obviously me, I, I know what they're trying to say here. Of course, but yeah, yeah. You know, but then again, wh where was I living? The UK, which has Boris Johnson. So, you know, swings and roundabouts. Swings and roundabouts. Is it better to have a racist ice cream or a racist prime minister? I'll take a racist ice cream any day of the week. I swear <laughs> to God. <laughs> you know, I just don't have to buy it. How are you, fam? How are you? Uh, yeah, good, thanks. Uh, I'm, I'm based in London, but obviously with lockdown, it doesn't really matter where you are to some extent. But just mm -hmm. trying to keep busy and... Um, I've been doing these sessions just as a, I just want to keep the content going and I've seen, like, it's seen. lovely to get a chat to you and you know, it's, it's, it's good fun. Yeah. Um, I was listening to the, uh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, you first, go ahead. The, the I, was, I was listening to the Brand New Souls album uh, on Friday and obviously you, you cameo on there. It's, it's such a great track, like the great, it's a great album as well. I don't know, I don't know if you've heard it yet, but um, I yeah, I love that project. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um... They, they sort of came to me. Uh, I didn't actually know it was skint and demoralized because, yeah. like, you, I mean, I think I've told you this before. You're part of the reason why I started working on music. Uh, yeah, that's amazing. Like, I remember you saying back in the day, that's mad, yeah. Yeah, because I, you know, um, he had contacted me and he was like, oh, I want you on the track. And I was like, okay, cool. And anyway, I think he lives in, ha he works in Hackney. And I went yes. down, and it was only when we were chatting after we had done the recording, he was like, yeah, you know, I started working, I did some stuff, and then I met this guy called Matt, and we did a thing called Skint and the Moral. I was like, oh, my God. So I gave him the whole speech. And when I found out that he had, you guys had worked with, I could, I, I, I instinctively knew, but I did not know. Like, I could tell yeah, from yeah. the music, but I did not know that you had worked with the Dark Kings. So that just blew my mind, because... You know, right, yeah. Street band was such a big influence to me. So I was just there, just basically just yelling at him. You're the reason I like music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. That was yeah, insane. He was telling me all these mad stories. But yeah, it was lots of fun. I didn't get to hear it until, was it like a few weeks ago? They were like, yeah, we're releasing it in a few months, in a few weeks. Here's a track. Tell us if you like it. And I was like, yeah, it's sick. Thank you. Cheers. Cool. Well, for anybody watching who hasn't listened to it yet, check it out. Souls is the name of the act and soon is the name of the album. I've been tweeting about it, so check it out. And uh, Like I said, Joshua cameos on it and it's, it's amazing. Um, so, do you fancy doing as a poem? I fancy doing you a poem. Sure. All right. Cool. Uh, I'm going to start with it as soon as my, my iPad decides to load. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Technology is, is cool. All right, cool. Um, so, a bit of... Uh, I hope, can you hear me? You can hear me all right, right? Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. It's all good. right, cool. A bit of a context to this one. Um, basically, I um, I wrote this like at the beginning of the year on a commission. Um, and it's essentially about as an immigrant and as a person who is of a minority here in 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 i hate using that word i mean of a, like a, a, an ethnic diverse population here in europe whenever i see another black man we often exchange a nod it's often very very subtle it's often very very quiet and it's very brief we just pass by and sort of the rarer we are the more the nod the more kind of pronounced is the nod in fact it was quite funny when i was workshopping this piece i actually found out that like because I said only black men, not black men, because if you're not a black woman, she might be thinking, what are you trying to say? And maybe you're trying to hit on me, so no. But then one of the black ladies there was like, no, I'm not black men all the time. And I was like, rah, I've been living my entire life not nodding that entire population of people. I'm so dumb. <laughs> and it was, it was very interesting because in Berlin, they don't have a very large black population there. So like, um, 
whenever I saw any black person, I would nod them. And sometimes I saw black people, they would they wouldn't nod me and I'd be like, okay, you know, it's fine. Maybe they, they're on their own mindset. But then I was chatting to one of the activists there and they had told me this really, really kind of sad story. Basically, like a lot of the immigrants who had come down couldn't find jobs. And whenever Im immigrants can't find jobs, they end up doing stuff that's nefarious. And in the case of a lot of black immigrants, they ended up selling drugs. Now, you need a way to kind of, in, you know, inform Pe uh, members of the population that you've got drugs if they want drugs. And what these black immigrants had found was the best way they could do that was through the nod. So you've got a lot of men, black men sitting in the corner nodding some white folk trying to sell them drugs, right? right. But they don't nod other black people because they know black people are just doing the nod because they think it's cool. But you right. understand? Yeah. They, yeah. They're just there thinking if you're nodding me it's because you want something good. And it was, it was kind of sad, but because, uh, like, I found myself in some... Re I've been in Bulgaria, and I saw a black man, and we gave the most very, like, our necks almost shattered. <laughs> just not because we were like, thank God you're here. I'm safe because you're here, fam. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. Enough of the chat. Here's the, uh, the poem. It's called uh, A Nod. <clears throat> I see another black man in a foreign land. We cross paths and exchange a nod. In this kind of place, where this kind of pigment scars, I don't even care if Brethren is really from these parts. It's enough that Brethren exists. Cause this last hour passed, some Berliner asked me if I saw ganja in two languages. Nobody but this Brethren knows how mad that is. And that is not a thing that was taught me, like a handshake or a courtesy. My first time was on an escalator in Helsinki. I was heading up, brethren was descending. We clocked and I hadn't realized how alone I had been all this time in a mall of cotton looks. In his pair of eyes was where I felt seen. As he passed by, I could have said hi, but my pride wouldn't let me. Go for a hug, maybe a high five, but I was scared he wouldn't get me. But then he did a nut, and without thinking, I did a nut. That's how I knew we were safe. Like, all it takes is two black men, and Helsinki is now my city. All it takes is two black men, and Berlin is my backyard. All it takes is two black men, and Stockholm is my mom's garden. Like any other time, we would have shaken hands, taken seats at a random, politely hostile cafe, chuckled at the awkward interaction with the counter girl, our masks off, our smiles big and bad, our language uncoded, our, land, our laughter untethered to decorum, bullying the premises, our voices loud and unbothered, like we're in the belly of our mother's kitchens, like we are about to fight, like we live here. Sometimes there's a nod, sometimes there's not. Sometimes they didn't see you, sometimes they don't see you. Sometimes they're lost, sometimes you're lost. Sometimes you're straight jacketed in your own skin and theirs is an unfortunate disguise. So it's a blessing whenever we two clock and the joy is on lock. I don't wanna gas up emotions. I don't wanna let them know our emotions. So we keep interactions brief. Tiny gestures bulked with beef. Solidarity as a raised brow. Love is a hand on chest. Respect is a two-fingered salute. Blessings sent with a wink. Within our smiles like whole sonnets, everyone around us ignorant, like we're comets passing through a clouded night, like we're two needles in a haystack state, where the God of the land don't know your face and the law of the land's like know your place. But we found each other, so we must be safe. Here, have a nod. Are we not alive? Is that not a good thing? Wow, that's so powerful. Cheers, when, very much. When did you write that? Huh? Have you, is that quite, when did you write that? Is that fairly 
recent you know or... what you know what it's like i wrote it in january and i have to admit like i read the line marks my mark i'll mask off and i was like i did not know what was coming i had no idea yeah, what was yeah. coming for us here's me talking i'll mask off like it's some kind of metaphor i had no idea what was <laughs> coming for us martin martin do you understand like my band yeah. is, shout out tom shout out shanaz we put, we did this like live video where we recorded from different places and spliced it together and we posted the video and i only just realized right then that the last time i we were all in the same space was march like uh -huh. me and you should have seen ourselves at a festival sometime you know we should have kind of like passed by a latitude and i'd be like hey how are you doing and you're like hey, what time are you performing and you'd be like uh, I don't know, you know, just come around Sunday. I might be hosting. I'll be like, yeah, I'll see you. I won't see you. <laughs> <laughs> I will not see you at your gig. <laughs> but shit, all of that's just gone. It's just gone. Poof, yeah. just poof, gone. No. Yeah. But yeah. It's scary, isn't it? It is. It's, 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 I think, um, I don't think we are ready for the change because, I mean, even though I'm in Stockholm, I still digest a lot of sweet uh, English news. I, I, my family is still in London, so I'm always obviously very, very concerned. And yeah, like, this is not just my hobby. It's also my social circle. And it's, it's, it's my career. It's where yeah. I get a lot of sustenance. And the fact that, like, there's a huge, big-ass like a uh, possibility that I might not be able to perform at full capacity till this time next year. Like, do you understand? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, really, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, like it's great because we've ended up having to find different ways to communicate like this. Like, I'm yeah. sure this is like the biggest conversation we've had together. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, yeah. For a gig, you get me, right? I know, it's magical. Yeah, we've done several gigs together, but it's just, it's just in, I think, just grappling with that and what that is going to mean to the scene, to ourselves, to writing, like what it's going to mean to like, you know, read works where people are talking about meeting up and hugging and being in spaces. How different is writing going to be on the other side of COVID? I, yeah, I, I don't think we even have the mind space to, to content. I don't, definitely, but yeah. No, absolutely not. Me neither. Yeah. Wow, amazing. Well, do you, do you fancy giving us another one? That was that was such a I, strong start. I, I fancy giving you another one. Like all of my pieces are gonna be dark. Like I um <laughs> I'm turning forty in uh twenty five days. So oh, wow. um yeah, this might be my last poetry reading before I turn forty, because I haven't got any of those booked. And um my plan is to get all of my music writ written because I want to start working on my poetry book from that point on. Um, um, like really, really working on it, and I finally have an idea of what I want to do. And uh, this is one of the pieces that's going to end up in it. Basically, long story short, um, George Floyd, when he <laughs> let me start from the beginning, all right? So, I uh, while I was in Sweden, I did MDMA for the first time. <laughs> Sorry, what's that? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll start again. So, first time I was here, <laughs> first time, uh, came here, did MDMA for the first time. And if you know what MDMA is like, it's like, you, you, you know, everything is lovely. Everyone's fantastic. You're hugging everybody. You're fucking putting fingers. Suddenly you realize why people listen to hard trance music. You're like, I get it. It's been 20 <laughs> years, but I finally get why you people like this shitty music. Oh my God, it is amazing. And then you have like an entire week of, oh, fuck, why did I do that? I feel depressed. I want to kill myself. I am so tired. I, I don't want to do anything. I am just completely burnt out. So yeah, but that happened the same week of George Floyd. So they come down and they're mm. like, there's this thing happening and the whole world is basically turning upside down. Yeah. And uh I was like really panicking, really upset, really sad, not really sure what I could do with my writing, watching 
fucking statues falling into the river in uh, what's it called um bristol and just yeah. kind of like breaking down and just you know and i decided that i was going to just scrap everything i had written before then not burn it or anything just put it in a folder and just be like there will be lines i can take out of this there'll be words i can take out of this but essentially what these poems are supposed to represent is not in line with what i feel i need to be doing because i was of i had suddenly sort of realized in some parts of my head that i need to talk about this moment yeah i need to talk about th this moment that i live in and that is a lot more pertinent than 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 everything else not to say that if you want to talk about everything else i think that's cool i think you do what you have to do but for me sort of the the over because sometimes I, I plan my writing and i think like oh shit i've been working on this poem about love i've been working on this poem about furniture so i have to see to the end i was like nah none of that like i was working on a whole piece about aesop's fables because i really like aesop's fables and i like that very very clear cut morality but i was like no i cannot look back on my life and think what was i doing between on forget 2016 to 2019 2020 what was i doing and so i yeah. was just like I need to be, I need to be in this moment. It might not always be, it might not be about Brexit, it might not be about the environment, it might not even be about Black Lives Matter, but I just need to always constantly engage this moment and be like, I need to be able to look at everything that I wrote this year and be like, I know exactly how I felt that time. Yeah. And so yeah, this was the first piece that I wrote. And uh, I don't know if you know the idea behind House Negroes and Field Negroes. Not, not properly, no, no. Okay, no. cool. So that comes from house slaves and field slaves. The idea is right. that the field slave is the one who walks in the field, whips on right. his back, fucking sweating all day, but every night he's planning on how to escape. However, the house Negro walks in the house. He dresses nice. He's like butler clothes. He gets scraps for the chicken. Sometimes he might even sleep with the master's wife because, you know, she's into that, right? And this has been a big disconnect in sort of American conversations, in Caribbean, Afro-Caribbean, uh, what's it called, discussions. Uh, calling someone a house Negro is a derogatory term because it's suggesting that you're not about the cause, that you're kind of like a traitor to the, to the struggle. That whereas, say, for example, um, uh, Martin Luther King might be like, we need to kind of free ourselves from oppression. A house Negro will be the one who will be like, there's no racism. I, you know, I'm black, and you know they provide themselves as as a fig leaf for the real racism. You know what I'm saying? Like Ben Carson and all not. So this piece is called "We Are All Field Negroes Now," and I, I guess it's the idea of kind of like because race is really important. Obviously, it's important to me, um, and but it's actually a lot more painful that um, a lot of people don't realize that um, we're all in this shit, and the only people who aren't in this shit are rich people, <laughs> you know, those are the only people who are in this shit. Those are the people who are building their bunkers and their castles and their high tower, whatever, right? At the very end of this day, you can scream Brexit all you want, but when they kick me out, they're coming for you. We are all, we all need yeah. to be field eagles. Anyway, enough chat. Thank you very much for getting me down. Let me read this thing. <clears throat> I am a field Negro now. Exodusing from these wretched plains, pour holy palm wine, wash away my shame. Blood is thicker than the cotton of sugar cane. I don't think you're ready for the change. Mate, you are a field Negro too, son. Drop your tools by the pavement and run. Leave Candace Owens on the plantation. Foolish us, thinking the overseer even had the keys to these chains. How could we expect the dungeon keeper to make the rules and play this game fair, dear dungeon keeper? Bless your greed for not granting me the little I asked of you. I would have played a fiddle and tap dance for you. I would have settled for some skittles and a safe path home, tightened up my belts, lightened up my skin, bitten down my tongue, I begged you for an inch. Let me have some liquor and a flat screen, a minute for my mind, scraps for my sandwich, you had me saying prayers in your accent. You made me forget my gods. You had me question my spirits, forsake my prophets, and then you cursed me with Trevor Phillips. Trevor 
Philip saw the pale face kick of it. One knee on my neck, one knee on my lungs, telling me to run sprint times in a marathon. Keep calm and carry on all oh, the audacity the unholy goddamn caucasity of it all thank you for refusing me this inch because now i do not recognize your yardstick the scales have toppled the curtains have collapsed the blonde baboon's ass is bare in the open i am a field negro now i do not need your equality it was never yours to give and even that is too minor, too little, too late. Pull the balaclava over my heart and set it running. My revolution rides atop a black horse and it is stunning. Graffiti over your temple walls. Gather me all my flowers. Shower them over my escape route. Shower them over my escape route. Molotov cocktails as my banner. Skull and crossbones is my skin tone. Babylon burn down is my jam, mate. It's my ringtone. We are rolling your monuments across the the street like tobacco, tossing your effigies into the river. They weren't even worth a pyre. Let me show you what you taught me about crimes. Forget a piece, we want the pie, and the everything must go sign. We are all filled Negroes now. So just dead this talk and get me my back. And maybe one day we'll see eye to eye on fancy furniture, but right now, though, sorry, not sorry, yo. Burn it all. Yeah, that's, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's immense. You were you wrote that in the wake of yeah, wow. Yeah, that's, yeah, man, that was that was a one shot. That was actually like you know. Was uh, that one shot? Yeah, it's one of those pieces that you. I, I, I'm sure you get that. Like you know, there's some pieces that you know you you, you write one line and then you know that line belongs in like the second half of the first bit of this long piece and it takes you like years to write it my love was one of those for me i remember the one love i wrote was one line i wrote was uh uh method to the madness my love my love has no method my love has no madness and then over the course of three or four years the rest of the poem kind of took shape whereas right. like this one like a lot there are some poems that are just like in a way it's almost like spirit writing the the emotion's yeah. clear do you understand the emotion is clear like every single part of that line just comes one after the other and you're gonna do a bit of editing just to kind of like prune it and whatever but essentially the whole thing is just right there and at that time i remember i was just so angry i was just so angry and i was watching i was just gorging on so much stuff on youtube and so much stuff on twitter all these people talking about like you know there's this really brilliant um a bit of like social media working is magic for example they had like um what's his name trevor phil uh, trevor not trevor fuck that dude trevor noah had done this talk about like why people were rioting and he was saying that like um there's this thing called a social contract and the social contract suggests that like you know when people the reason why people don't riot is because they believe that um the society works for them they believe that like if I don't commit crimes, I will die. So when they see yeah. that social contract being broken time and time again, they are thinking, why, why should I not loot? Why should I not burn down this shit? Yeah. Why, should I, why, why does anything matter? Because it's not like you're keeping your end of the contract to me. Do you get me? Yeah. Not like you are, 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 are keeping your end of the bargain. And best believe, like, society british uk maybe sweden they they've written several contracts over and over again because they appreciate what that contract promises you know you tell motherfucker like yeah i'm going to not give you i'm giving you zero hours i'm selling your health care i'm giving you chlorinated chicken i'm poisoning your water i'm giving you nowhere to live i'm making it difficult for you to live in a place that your entire family has grown but i won't kill you so then it's fine. And people have signed on to that willingly. They've signed on to it. They're happy with it. Hell, you toss in a little bit and I'll make fun of black people on your behalf or I'll kick out a couple of brown people. And they're enthusiastic about that. And it gets lower and lower and lower. But those black people, those brown people, the, those working class people, at some point, they're like, what life is this? And then yeah. from Trevor Noah, uh, one of the activists in, um, I think it was Philadelphia, I can't remember, she 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 did this big
big rant that spun off it where she went into like she expanded it to some next level where she's talking about she's talking explaining housing she explained health and she's talking about you know what's he called um the police as this big fascist nation and she's like of course we're burning this shit down none of it means anything to us right we don't own it we don't live here we won't be buried here we can't sleep here we can't you know stand on healthcare and yeah anyway this is all stuff that just kind of like came into this and yeah yeah so powerful like of all the poems that have that have been performed on these since May, that's that's we're by far one of the most powerful. That just, it was just stunning. Like Thank I almost you. like to like pause for a minute and just be like, oh, yeah, no, it was mad. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, no, thank you. Really, thank you so much. I really appreciate what you're doing, man. I think everything because I tried to do it for a while, like this Instagram thing, and it's it's hard. And I think it it it, it takes a lot to kind of put effort into that. I, and I really appreciate you asking me to do it. I really appreciate you know. Um, everything you've done with like uh, nymphs and fogs, like I mean, a record label that puts out poetry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, is, that was hard and during the best of times to keep this shit going during COVID. That's like really <laughs> like I rate I rate you, man. Like you, I mean, I've told you this before. Like I used to listen to Skin to tomorrow, and I'd be like, "Yo, this is it. This is where we need to get to. This is the thing." To, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no. Well, like, that's seriously. great, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to the Tongue Fu album. Obviously, that's coming out soon, which you feature on as well. So yeah, good times, despite yeah, what's happening. It's, 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 yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's, it's strange that it's coming out now because it's, it's essentially, it does have connection with what's going on. So yeah, I just appreciate that I, I get to put a voice into it. But yeah, man, yeah. when is your shit coming out though? When's your shit coming out? We've, we've heard Demoralize. When we go here, Skint, that's what I want to know. When when we, we've heard Demoralize, when is Skint coming in though? Uh, I don't know. I did a, I did my two little duck show, which was sort of like 2018, 20, uh, 2017, 2018. So I'm working on something behind the scenes, but we'll see. Hope, hopefully early 2022, which seems mad, record? but it's only just over a year away. Did you record uh, Two Little Ducks? Yeah, yeah. It's on Spotify and all that. Yeah. I mean, did you um, film it live? Oh, I, I did a Facebook live performance, so you can see me performing it like sat here. Obviously, it's not the same as in a theatre, but I never realised that I'd have to. So, I will where, do it properly when I'm where, able to. Where, where's the Facebook live? Because I'd like to watch that. Because I, you know, uh, I watch YouTube, that. YouTube and Facebook. Uh, oh, just slash Matt Abbott poet. Yeah, but, Matt, yeah, Matt, yeah. I, I, I literally called you Matt Skins, you know. <laughs> it used to be Matt Skins back in the day, man. That's that's taking me back some. <laughs> yeah, so Matt Abbott. Cool. Two little dogs. Yeah, yeah, I'll watch it, man. Definitely. I'll check well, it out. Thank you, mate. No, worries, um, no it's lovely catching up. And uh, hopefully, we'll see you at Latitude at some point in the distant future. We'll see. Fingers crossed, man. Stay safe. Hey, love is yeah. the law. Wash your paws. Don't clench your jaw. Get me. No. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, man. You, Take care, yeah. man. Uh, wow, that was uh, Joshua Dehan. That poem that he did just. Stunning. I can't wait to sit and watch that back because it actually stunned me a bit. Like when he finished, I was just, just like, yeah. So yeah, that was uh, that was brilliant. Um, next week, Jasmine Gardosi. Um, and if you've missed any of the previous sessions, they're all on IGTV, YouTube and Facebook. So yeah, join us next week, 7.30 till 8pm UK time. Jasmine Gardosi. Have a good night. Cheers. <laughs>